As the demon returned to its feet, armor and mask fell away, revealing its true form. It seemed to stand even taller than before, and in place of its rapier, it now brandished a great lance. The reflection swallowed his fear and stared up at the demon. I say again, you are to go no further, said the demon. And I say again, I wish to keep going. The demon charged forward with its lance, but the reflection had picked up the dropped rapier. He sidestepped the charge and thrust the blade into the demon's heart. There is nothing for you here, reflection. Why continue? asked the demon with its last breath. Because I want to see for myself, replied the reflection as he limped away. Hello everyone and welcome back to Spooktacular 2021. Today we are reviewing the HG Iron Blooded Orphans Gundam Kimaras Vidar. This will be the last gumbo that we are looking at for the Spooktacular event, but I think you'll quite enjoy it. But before we get to the actual figure, let's take a look at the box itself. So we have very nice illustration of the Kimaras Vidar with its impressive lance and not as impressive looking sword. The HG Iron Blooded Orphans logo, Iron Blooded logo there, and then Kimaras Vidar in Japanese and English. And of course we have the blue Bandai logo there. On this side we have some lovely painted photographs showing all the various things the kit can do. You'll find that the one that we will be looking at will be a little bit different. Once again, Rodimus 13 has painted this. Next, we have the same illustration as before, and all the same other information in the BandaiHobby.net logo. And then here we have a callout for the various customization options you can get, as well as the usual warning info and the lopsided barcode. Finally, this side is the same as the other, except we have the new Bluefin sticker. All right, enough of this. Let's toss this and take a look at the actual figure. And here it is. As you can see, there is quite a bit different from what we saw in the box. Rodimus 13 did not wish to use the large sort of purplish blue stickers that were supposed to be used. So instead, he opted to paint the parts, but because they were a distinctive color, he decided to repaint all the plastic that was of that color, which made for quite a bit of work. He's a bit of a fool that way, but here we are. In addition to that, he also dry brushed silver on to create a sort of chipped metal effect, as well as some other bits of weathering. He was quite proud of how this turned out. There's also some extra detail work and painting work done on these parts in here, which we will take a closer look at later. As the name suggests, this is a upgrade of sorts of the Gundam Vidar. Now, instead of looking like its disguised self, it looks more like the original Kimaris that it came from. Let's get a closer look at it. As you can see, we have the dry brush silver on it. And all this blue is brand new paint. And then there are a few details here and there that Rodimus 13 put on. And then everything was topped off with a matte coat. It really does bring everything together and hide the crimes as it were. I've been told that the head was the most infuriating part to make that little blue face mask was incredibly difficult to get into place. And I believe he said that the eye stickers were individual stickers as well, making it incredibly difficult to do. But it is an impressive sculpt with a very prominent mohawk horn. Like the last two we looked at, this is built on the standard Gundam frame, though this time it's in a more 
bluish gray color as opposed to the usual brown, which is interesting. But unlike the Marcosius that we saw the first time around, this one, while bulky, doesn't add as much weight to everything, particularly in the back. These are quite heavy, but everything condenses down and it doesn't feel nearly as detrimental as the backpack on the Marcosius. Articulation-wise, you have your standard ball socket joint, butterfly jointing, rotation, bicep rotation, single jointed elbow, ball socket wrist, which allows for hand changing, ab crunch, waist ball socket, articulated skirts that allow for kicking up. You do have a double jointed knee, but because of the armor, you're effectively only getting 90 degrees. And then the standard ankle joint that you get from an IBO kit. Though the armor does prevent it from going out quite as far. Though really, a lot of the articulation is in the back here. Let's pull one of these off to better show what I'm talking about. So the back has two of these sort of shield arms, which have articulation points here, here, and in the back, which allow them to be positioned in quite a number of ways. You do wish to exercise caution though, these armatures are quite thin and I'd be concerned about them breaking. If you wish, you can also pull this apart and then reassemble it, sort of illustrate it going into an attack mode. Rodimus added some extra detail in here. He also did repaint this entire section so that way he could have this part matching color as well. And you have this missile or whatever this is in here that can be positioned or removed as required. So as you can see, you can position them effectively however you wish. Though again, advise caution as these feel like they could break if too much stress is put on them. So we've looked at that gimmick. Let's look at some of the other things that this kit can do. If you wish, you can use this drill weapon and attach it onto its knee. So you can knee and drill into your opponents. Quite vicious. Though I don't know if I'm really going to be using it that much. It's, an, a, vicious, it's a vicious attack, but it seems somewhat silly and very specific on the needs for posability. Next, we have a katana-like blade that can simply slide into the hand, which looks quite nice. The hole in it does allow for you to connect it onto the hip skirt armor there, but I find trying to do so limits possibility and it's just difficult to do. So I ignore it. And the final weapon is this. Can barely even fit it on the camera. It is a rather large lance. It is bigger than the actual kit. You can see Rodimus 13 did quite a bit of weathering on this as well. You do have a dedicated holding hand for it. As you can see, it has an angled joint. Come on. It has an angled joint for the wrist. Also, the thumb is out, what I find somewhat interesting, but there we are. Let's go ahead and get this thing attached. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take one of these weapons and push it into the hole here and it stops halfway through, so it sticks out. Now we'll simply detach the normal fist and attach the new one. Then we can position this like so. 
And here we are. And I have to admit, this is quite impressive. I imagine that the concept behind this is that the armature helps support the large weapon, as well as allowing it to fire these things through it. And yes, I quite like the look of this one. I think this might be one of my favorites of the three that we have done. <laughs> so yes, I think overall this gets a very fine recommendation. The main problem is the stickers which is something that all IBO kits have a slight problem with. You can get by with them or ignoring them, but if you really want this to shine, paint and weathering, I think, will be the way to go. But I believe that is enough talking for now. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all those fine YouTube manipulations. Check the description below for links to our storefront where we can get official shelf space t-shirts and more. And yes, thank you again, and I'll see you the next time you invade my shelf space. <laughs> it will be the last spooktacular video for 2021. Make sure you're there. I command it. <laughs>